The topic for this one is branchless programming. Let's begin by understanding what's branching. It is when your program can take different execution paths, meaning there will be some part of your code that will not be executed. One of the common ways of introducing a branch in your code is using an if. Before moving on to an example, I'll talk about an oversimplified version of fetch, uh, decode, execute cycle. Every program is broken down into a set of instructions, then brought onto RAM for execution. When the program is run, the program counter gets the address of the first instruction, the instruction at that address is fetched, and then loaded into the instruction register, where it's decoded, which usually involves bringing in more data from memory and then sent for execution. Then, PC counts up to point to the next instruction, and the cycle continues. Modern computers try to get the data ready before the CPU is free to execute the next instruction, which gets a bit tricky when there's a branch, because then the program can take more than one path, and the next instruction can be at any one of those. That's when the computer tries to predict the next instruction, but when the prediction goes wrong, it has to reset the PC and IR, and then bring in the current instruction, which results in a performance penalty. Let's look at an example. This is a simple function that takes two ends and returns the bigger one. The assembly code for this would look something like this. This is the conditional jump instruction which decides the next instruction to be executed. It can either go to this label or execute this bunch of instructions. In any case, there will be some instructions that will not be put to use. Now, Let's look at how we can write the same function that does not involve branches. This is possible in C because it implicitly evaluates relational operations to a 1 or a 0. Let's run this expression through an example. Let a equal 3 and b equal 19. The bigger of these would be 19 and we would expect this expression to be returned by the function. As precedence goes, we evaluate the brackets first, then the multiplication, and finally the addition to get the result, which is exactly what we expected. And that was a simple example to demonstrate branchlessness. I'd like to share a piece of code wherein I had some fun uh, eliminating branches. So I was writing a test that took in a sort routine and called it over a hard-coded array of integers then checked to see if the elements were sorted. If they were not, it printed an X, else a check. And these were the branches that I wanted to get rid of. I thought of using an array to store the X and the check as I could map the value of flag to the index of that array and in one printf I could print either the X or the check based on the value of flag. So. I introduced an array of character pointers with x at index 0 and check at 1. The next step was to make flag hold the value 0 if the array was not sorted, else a 1. Then print the string at index flag. So I exploited the uh, fact that a comparison operation will output a 1 or a 0 and kept ending its result with flag. If any one of them failed, then I knew for sure that flag would never become a 1 again, which works well with the fact that I stored x at index 0. But this brings me here. If I started with a 0, then it would remain a 0. So that needs to start with a 1. You can also go the other way around, making use of or and changing other things accordingly, but here's how it looked after eliminating the branches. There are a couple of questions that you can ask, one of them being, isn't this loop going to create a branch? yes and no. I've hard-coded num scores and it is a small value so an intelligent compil compiler would unroll the loop into the number of steps required. That is if num scores were 3 the loop would unroll into this. Even if it were not the computer would automatically bring the instruction at the beginning of the loop into the instruction register after every iteration which would only fail once at the end of the loop which is not a significant loss. The other question that might have crossed your mind would be the lossy comparisons. In our branchful code, we would break out of the loop immediately if any one of the values didn't match. But no such thing is happening in this code. Well, 
we could make the flag uh, to be a part of the condition block, but although invisible, that would introduce a branch within, uh, which would be the point. So this is where it's at. Is this faster than the branchy version? Obviously not when there are a hundred thousand numbers and the first number hasn't been put in the right place. Was this fun? Absolutely. I've talked about swapping upper and lower casing letters using bitwise operations, which I think make another good example for branchless programming. That was it for this one. Thanks for watching.